glad you could join us today. I'm Miss Janet. And I'm Professor K. And we're coming to you from the spooktacular... <laughs> Science Lab in Glendale, Arizona. And we are going to be doing a Ghostbusters themed craft today. Yes, very exciting. And before we get started, we just want to let you know that you can tune in to watch a spectacular science at home video program with lots of fun Halloween themed experiments with myself and Miss Janet. It'll be available beginning the video on October 21st. So check out the Glendale Public Library online calendar for more information and the link to that fun program. Yes. So what are we making today, Miss Janet? Well, glad you asked. Today we are making something exciting. It is October, you know, Halloween is coming. So right? what better craft to make than slime? <gasps> oh, I love making slime. I know, it's so much fun. So what do we need then for that, Professor? Here's what we'll need. And Miss Janet, before we get started, yes. we just want everyone to know at home that we do have a safety plexiglass shield here between Miss Janet and I to help keep us safe. So let's carry on. Okay, this is super simple, super fun. And what we're going to do is take three simple ingredients. Well, it's slime, you can do any color you want. I got glitter glue in green, of course. I mean, you can do it in any color, but we're gonna do green slime. And then you're gonna need some water and your liquid starch. So I'm gonna get started here in my cauldron. So it's very and exciting. Yes, I'm excited too. Let's see. I'm going to put in, ooh, this glue, it comes out kind of slow, so and it's a little noisy, so I'm squeezing the bottle. It's already a little slimy, the glue itself. It is. Now this glue, you don't have to use the colored glitter glue. You can use clear glue. You could even use the Elmer's or the school glue in the white if you'd like. It's just going to be a little bit different um, color. It won't be so uh, translucent. But anyway, I thought this was super fun because it already had the, the uh, glitter in it and it's kind of translucent. So I have my glue here and I'm gonna Bring put it in there. The cauldron. I am. Nice. I'll set this over here and then. Can I help in some way while you're doing that or? Oh, yeah, you know what? Uh, would you take our uh, liquid starch and in that cup over there next to you, uh, put in about a half of a cup of that liquid starch. That would be great. And remember everyone at home, it's good to have a pair of big person helping you out with all these chemicals. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do while Professor is doing the starch is I'm gonna go ahead and pour just some of this warm water into my glue, into the cauldron, bubbly bubbly. And I'm going to stir, stir, stir that in. Get it going a little bit. Okay, got a little too much yeah. starch. I'm going to pour some okay. more back in there. Okay. Let's get as much of this glue out of here as I can. All right, I think we're ready with the starch. Okay, let me just get this glue mixed with the water a little bit more. I want it blended. This is going to take a little time, but it's well worth it when you get your final result. You're going to be glad that you did it. I'm very okay. anxious to see the final product. I hope it won't take too long. Well, I'll do it as quickly as I can, Professor. Okay, you want to go ahead and slowly pour that right okay. there into the cauldron. Do it ever so carefully. Yes, I don't want any starch on me. Woo! Okay, that's enough. That's good. Okay, that's great. Okay, now here 
is where you're gonna have to practice patience, kiddos, because you're gonna stir, 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 and it's gonna take a while. And so I'm gonna just stir, 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 and when it starts kind of coming together and sticking to the sides of the bowl, then you'll know it's about ready for you to take out. All right, I'm gonna anxiously wait. Okay. Ghostbusters, adapted by John Zaklis, illustrated by Alan Batson. Ghostbusters, based on the screenplay written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, directed by Ivan Reitman. When there's something strange haunting you, like ghosts and spooks and specters, and things that go bump in the night, who you gonna call? The, the Ghostbusters! Ghostbusters! It all began when three scientists named Peter Venkman Ray Stance and Egon Spangler discovered that ghosts were real and a real problem for New York City. They started a ghost catching business called Ghostbusters. When the alarm rings, they grab their proton packs and ghost traps. Then they race to the scene of the disturbance in their souped up ghost busting mobile Ecto-1. The Ghostbusters realized that things were getting a little weird when they answered a call at a fancy up-down hotel. Ray spotted something he'd never seen before. A hungry green ghost named Slimer. Ray chased Slimer into Peter. SWAT! Using his PKE meter, Egon tracked Slimer into the hotel ballroom. Egon warned the Ghostbusters not to cross the Proton Pack screens. It would be bad. The Ghostbusters quickly snared Slimer in a tangle of Proton Beams and sucked him into one of their traps. Soon, more and more ghosts appeared, scaring up trouble all over town. Peter, Ray, and Egon needed help, so they hired a man named Winston Zedmore. Winston chased ghosts across the city as a ghostbuster. But where were all the ghosts coming from? The answer to that question could be found uptown. The supernatural cloud above a high-rise apartment building was drawing in ghosts from another dimension. One day, a young musician named Dana Barrett was resting in her apartment. Suddenly, her favorite chair came to life and tried to grab her. And Dana's neighbor, accountant Louis Tully, almost became the chew toy of a snarling terror dog. Something very strange was happening. The Ghostbusters rushed to the rescue. At the top of the building, they found Dana, Louis, and a powerful being named Gozer. Whatever it is, well, it's got to get past us, Peter declared. Suddenly, Gozer transformed Dana and Louis into two growling terror dogs with glowing red eyes. Then the villain exclaimed, Choose the form of the Destructor. The Ghostbusters fired proton beams at Gozer, but it vanished into thin air. Suddenly a spooky voice boomed, The choice is made! Whoa! Peter shouted, looking at his teammates. Did you choose anything? I... I just couldn't help it, Ray stammered. Look! It's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Ray hadn't meant to. But he had thought of it. Now the Destructor had taken the form of a Marshmallow Man hundreds of feet tall. There's something you don't see every day, Peter joked as the giant marched toward them. The Stay Puft Marshmallow Man climbed the building reaching out with his delicious puffy hand to grab the Ghostbusters. Kaboom! Egon came up with a radical idea. We'll cross the streams. Ghostbusters combined their streams from their proton packs into one massive blast and aimed it right into the portal Gozer had opened. Heat from the explosion roasted the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Everything was covered in fluffy white goo. But it had worked. The portal was closed. Dana and Lewis returned to normal, and the city was saved. The heroes were greeted by thousands of cheering fans. <laughs> I love this town, Winston said. Now the city knew exactly who to call. The Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, who you gonna call? Adapted by John Sazaklis, illustrated by Alan Batson. Based on the screenplay written by Katie Dippold and Paul Feig. Based on the 1984 film Ghostbusters, an Ivan Rettman film. Written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. Directed by Paul Feig. Aaron Gilbert, Abby Yates, and Jillian Holtzman were scientists in New York City who studied ghosts. They believed ghosts were real, but they didn't have any proof. They were determined to change that by making contact with the spirit world. Erin had heard that the old Aldridge mansion was haunted, so she got the team together to investigate. Inside, they found a real ghost, and it wasn't scary at all. In fact, the ghostly lady was eerily beautiful. 
Aaron approached it and said, She looks so peaceful. But in a flash, the ghost turned nasty and sprayed slime all over her. Abby was thrilled. Ghosts are real, she said. That means they could be all over New York. With more and more ghosts beginning to haunt the city, Aaron, Abby, and Holtzman became Ghostbusters. Even though their office was above an old Chinese restaurant, and their receptionist, Kevin, wasn't very helpful, and they didn't have a car, the team was ready to start ghost hunting. Holtzman got busy. She went to work creating proton packs and traps. If we're going to catch ghosts, she said, we're going to need a lot of juice. The next day, Patty Tolan, a subway employee, followed a man named Rowan into a train tunnel. He was doing something suspicious with a strange device that started to spark and glow. A frightening ghost named Sparky appeared, scaring Patty out of her wits. But she knew who she could call for help. After meeting the Ghostbusters, Patty joined the team. She had read books about New York and knew the city better than anyone. Patty borrowed uniforms for the team from her subway job, and she even got them a car. They named it Ecto-1. Now they were officially ready for business. First stop, a supernatural disturbance at a heavy metal concert. The Ghostbusters arrived at the concert hall where a menacing ghost named Mayhem had trashed the stage. Aaron shouted, let's crash this paranormal party. The team used their proton beams to hold Mayhem while Holtzman threw down her trap to catch the monstrous ghost. The crowd went wild! We thought it was part of the show! Backstage at the concert, the Ghostbusters found another device like the one Patty had seen in the subway tunnel. Rowan was there too. When he ran off, the Ghostbusters followed him to the Mercado Hotel where he worked as a janitor. What are you up to? Abby asked, tracking him down to his workshop in the hotel's basement. My machines have finally broken the barrier between the spirit world and ours, he cackled, as he unleashed a horde of horrible ghosts. The ghosts from Rowan's portal poured into the streets. The Ghostbusters followed them and found themselves in the middle of an eerie Thanksgiving Day parade with giant balloon ghosts. Rowan's machine turned him into a ghostly ghoul, too. He ordered his marching mob to attack the Ghostbusters. That's a lot of creepy, Patty exclaimed. The Ghostbusters fired up their proton packs and fought their way through the ghosts. Crackle, zap, pop! Holtzman launched a proton grenade that blew up the nearest nasties into puddles of ectoplasmic ghost goo. Splat! Rowan was furious. He transformed himself into a giant ghost and tried to stomp the Ghostbusters. The team made a narrow escape. We need to close that portal! Abby cried. The Ghostbusters combined their proton power into one concentrated stream of energy aimed at the portal. Let's light it up! Kaboom! There was a mighty explosion and then the portal began to pull the spirits back into their own dimension. Unable to escape its pull, Rowan vanished into the swirling portal too. Goodbye! See ya! What I want to be ya! The Ghostbusters had single-handedly saved the city from paranormal peril. Now everyone in New York knew exactly who to call. Professor! Oh no! Uh, Professor! The slime is ready! Oh, oh it is! Yes, Finally! Look! Oh, wow, Excited to see you. Goodness, let me move my book. We don't want any slime in the book. No, no slime in the library book. Here. Can I actually take some? You can. It's we'll little break bit apart. Sticky. Well, we can pull, pull, pull. Oh, oh. We got some. I got some. And the more you're gonna work with it with your hands, the better consistency it's gonna be. Right now, it's a little bit sticky, but wow, look at that. Now you know if there's not enough glitter in it, or if you do the clear glue. Uh, I forgot to add this a while ago. You can add a food coloring to make it any color you want, and you can add glitter too. But this was all ready to go, so this made it super easy. Slime is so fascinating. I know. It's somewhere between a solid and a liquid. If you have a bit of slime in your hand and it just you just let it sit there and the slime will spread out and ooze between your fingers like a liquid. But if you squeeze your hand around the slime, it behaves more like a solid. So which is it? I think it's both. This is so cool. I love it. I hope everyone at home has a chance to try this. It doesn't take very much to very many ingredients, and it's a lot of fun if you have the patience to, to stir for a while. Yeah. 
I know. And you did pretty well, Professor, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, kids, I hope you enjoyed the craft today. So, there you go. Just like Slimer, right? Ectoplasm and all that stuff. So, enjoy. Have fun. And join us next time. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thank you.